What's up guys, Tucker here, from SNS Smithing. Today we're going to be working on a new guillotine tool. Alright guys, as you all know, we have that 500 subscriber challenge where I'll be working on taking this hammer, this 4 pound engineering hammer, and turning it into a straight peen. And uh, to do that, I'm going to need a heavier du duty guillotine tool than the one I already have. Um, so, we're going to be making one with half inch thick dies today. We're going to be working on it. Uh, as the video goes, I'm going to have dimensions for things in the description. And I'm going to do my best to try to remember to put little like captions on the screen of sizes of things I'm cutting or working on. So that way you could get them and make this yourself. Alright, so this is going to be a fabrication video, obviously. So, uh, there might be a little forging at the end to test it out but not really anything major. I know there's been a lot of fabrication videos lately, but this is just the stuff I've got to work on for right now. But we're going to have lots of forging here soon as we get closer, moving towards preparation for this challenge. Now, guys, we're almost at 200 subscribers. As I looked at it earlier today, I believe we were at like 275 somewhere around there, or I mean 175. So we're almost to the 250 mark which is where we're going to be making all the tools we need to make that hammer into a new one and to start making hammers in general once we do once we do this one we're going to go ahead and start working on some uh, lighter hammers like two pound two and a half pound hammers and try our hand at making some of those but all right let's get working on the guillotine tool Alright guys, here's our going to be our base plate for it. It's a half inch thick plate. Um, it should be as close to the size of your anvil as you can get it, like at least width wise. Um, this one's a little bit larger, but that's okay. I might trim it off. I might keep it. I'll probably end up keeping it so that way I know I have enough room to weld the angle iron on it. The other parts we're going to be needing here is going to be some angle iron. The heavier duty you can get the better but this small stuff's all I have at hand right now so it's gonna have to work. Um, it's inch by inch legs on it so we're gonna need seven inches of that to make the uprights that the dies will slide through and then we're going to have this half inch by one inch bar that we're going to use as a spacer in the angle iron so that way the dies have enough room to move up and down. Alright guys, these are the pieces that's going to be our dies. This is 4 by 7. Uh, this is or 4 by 5 I think. I don't quite remember. I'll have to remeasure whenever we get there. Uh, as our top die. And then our bottom die here is uh, 4 by 2. And then for on top of the top die, we're going to have a little hammering block to save our dies a little bit in life. It's about two by two. We're going to weld that to the top, and this will be the striking surface of the die. Alright, so let's get working on it. Alright guys, I'm not going to be the first one to come up with this design for this guillotine tool. It's in a book. I don't quite remember the book, but uh, James over at uh, County Line Forge. He made this one, a couple other people made this one. I'll put a link to James's video in the description so you guys can see how he made his. Uh, and then the name of the book, because I don't remember the book or the author that has the actual thing in. So this is based on kind of what I saw him do and I've seen other people do. Alright guys, so we'll start laying everything out. The uh, Patreons will get to watch that part. And then we'll get to cutting everything up. And then we'll... Weld it all together. Alright guys, so first things first here, we're going to, I broke the tripod, if you're in the Patreon video you already know about that, but anyway, uh, I broke the tripod so we're going to have to deal with some not so great angles for a little while. So bear with me on that, I apologize, I'll try to get a new one as soon as possible. But right now we are cutting the angle iron in, uh, we need four seven inch pieces so I have it all marked out already and uh, 
a tip real fast you need to remember whenever you're trying to make cuts that are the same length and things like that out of one bar you need to make sure you have the uh, you account for the thickness of whatever you're using the cut off be it like a chop saw wheel, a cut off wheel, band saw, torch cut all that you have to add that in so that way you end up with the right amount of material alright guys uh, as always, if you're using power equipment to cut stuff, uh, remember to use eye and hearing protection. Alright guys, we got four seven inch pieces that we're going to be using for the uprights here on our guillotine tool still a little warm we'll set those aside next thing we got to do here is cut our spacer and these are also going to be we're going to only have two seven inch pieces so let's go ahead and get working on cutting that up All right, let's get started cutting the seven inch space. All right, guys, so here we go. Here are our two seven inch spacers along with our four seven inch pieces of angle iron we'll have a half inch that will be clear whenever we weld these together like that so that'll be where the dies go in and then we'll have the other one go over top of it kind of like that and it'll slide in that gap all right guys uh, next thing we have got to do is take the piece that goes for the uh, hardy hole and we're gonna grind it a little bit just to get it to the shape we need or size and then we'll cut it off uh, we might try to use it in the chop saw that'll be the Thickest piece of metal that we I've tried to cut. Well, I cut a piece of, uh, I think it was like inch and a quarter anchor chain. Case hardened wrought iron I've cut tried to cut with this. Uh, I made it about halfway through and started kind of stalling the saw out a little bit. But that's just uh, mild steel. It's not case hardened or nothing. So we'll give it a shot. See what happens once we get everything ground down. So... Come along with me. All right, guys. Well, my hardy hole is not as like square, square as I thought it was. Like the one side actually closes at an angle, kind of about an eighth of an inch one way. So instead of trying to grind the sixteenth off, uh, which I was working on, and then I realized my whole hardy hole isn't square. Um, it's close enough now where it kind of locks in place a little bit. So I'm just gonna throw her in the forge, heat it up, tap her down through, and then. Uh, Probably throw it back in, use the cutoff tool, and lop it off. Alright, we'll see if we can get everything figured out to get that all lined up. Just knock down the end a little bit here. Right in here. We don't need a whole lot of heat because there's not a lot of material to move. Around. 
Bring it hopped up to our eight pound hammer. Try to make this go a little faster. She's cold off. See if it works a little bit. Almost done. We're on the last leg of it. Well, guys, we cut through it. Um, we had some troubles with it a little bit. Uh, whenever I was on that last little bit, uh, the uh, power flipped, so I had to go turn it back on. So I think that is the all absolute maximum that this can do. Uh, you saw a couple times it started sputtering a little bit and having to lift it back up so it could get back to speed. But yeah, that is, I believe, the maximum it will do is about one inch solid square bar and that's pushing its limits pretty good. So we'll have to use the torch or cutoff wheel to cut anything about that size from now on because that is pretty big stock to be cutting with this thing. Like I said, this is the um, this is the 14 inch Porter Cable Chop Saw. Uh, I did a review on it. It just hit over a thousand views on it. So uh, check it out. I got it from Tractor Supply for about a hundred dollars. Uh, I think it works great. You get nice square cuts out of it. I'll put a link to it somewhere up here in one of the cards, and you guys can click on it and watch the review later. But anyway, back to the guillotine tool. Alright guys, for the guides, I have the spacer in and a half inch square bar put between the two angle irons. So that way I know I'm going to have the right amount of spacing I want them to be set in. I want the dies to go in a half inch, so that's what the half inch square bar is. Now I'm going to come around here, I'm going to tack the top part here, and then the top part on the other side. And then I'll do the same thing with the other one. And then we'll tack them to the base plate. And then we will, or well, once we get that done, we'll weld them. And then we will weld them to the base plate. And then, all right, here we go. We're gonna be welding these together now. I'll probably only do one weld so that we
Alright guys, now we're going to be mounting the shank to the back of the plate, the base plate, and then we'll attach everything up top. Alright guys, I got the guillotine tool pretty much put together. I have, I tacked the sides up and I put a die in to help keep the spacing from wandering as it's getting welded. So, let's finish her up here. Now that we got that welded up, now we just got to go ahead and tack on, or weld on our last little bit right here. Alright guys, so here we go, bottom die slides in nice and easy like, and then our top die goes in right like that, and we end up with put stock in like this. Yeah, yeah this one has a lot less play than my other one. Let's give you guys a closer look at it here. So, this is our striking plate up here. You guys okay? Yeah? Okay, cool. The camera broke off the tripod. Like I said it did already. I thought I had it fixed, but apparently not. Okay, anyway. So, let's give you guys a quicker look, a better look here. Um, this is our top die, we interchange like that, you know, just pull them out, drop them down. The only play you see wiggling there is that little bit in the hardy hole, which is fine with me. Uh, there's our spacer, but it's all done. Alright guys, if you enjoyed this video, Give it a thumbs up. If you didn't, give it a thumbs down. Uh, like always, like, share, comment, and subscribe. I'll be putting a link to the other guillotine tool I made over here. The chop saw that just hit a thousand views over here. And remember guys, we're almost to that 150, 100, yeah, 250 subscriber challenge mark. So share it around guys and let's get there together. 
and then soon we'll have that hammer built. Alright guys, see you later. Forge on.